Am I the butthole for going behind my mom's back to get a diagnosis? So background to this, I, 17 male, have a twin sister, 17 female. Our parents have always kind of had us compete with each other and are especially sticklers for academics. My sister has always done much better than me on that front. TBH, I've always found school very frustrating. It's not like I'm thick or anything, I know loads of stuff and often know the answers in class, I've just always struggled with focusing and putting my thoughts together coherently in a way teachers like. I also have a horrible memory, so exams are a nightmare, I can study and study and study something for hours sometimes and still not remember it when it comes to the test. And that's when I can study, sometimes I honestly really want to but I just can't. Like I'll sit there, staring at my workbook for ages and there's just some block where I can't do it. My parents just kind of ignore all this and tell me to study harder like my sister. I try some of her study methods, and some of them help, but mostly they don't work for me. I always kind of thought I was just doomed to be crap at education. The situation, I started dating a boy about a year ago whose big sister is a psychologist. A few months ago, he and I were talking about school while she was in the room and she kind of said sorry to butt in, but have you ever been tested for ADHD? I said I hadn't, because I didn't think I had it. The image I had of ADHD was always the rambunctious kid who played class clown, which is very much not me. She explained that wasn't always the case and a lot of the things I was describing sounded like ADHD symptoms. I relayed this to my parents and they both, especially my mom, got upset and said that I'm just looking for a way to not take accountability and that ADHD didn't exist in their day. I got upset, but talked to my BF sister again and she pointed me in the right direction to go and talk to people about it without my parents overseeing. Obviously with the Rona, it was difficult but I managed to get the necessary appointments and finally had it confirmed that I have ADHD. Now my parents are mad. They keep on about how I'm just trying to remove responsibility and how they don't recognize the diagnosis as valid. They've also said they don't want me talking to my boyfriend anymore, saying his family are a bad influence. We're both upset about it. Was it a bad idea for me to go get the diagnosis when they told me not to? So, absolutely NTA. After reading the first paragraph it seemed like classic ad, without the hyperactive, but why go behind their backs instead of looping them in? How were you able to get a specialist appointment without your parents' consent, go vent your age and insurance, unless where you live the protocols are different? Update to post didn't realize that ad was no longer a diagnosis but rather ADHD manifests as both internal and external hyperactivity. It's been a long time since I researched it. Thanks y'all for helping me to understand. I'm in the UK, we don't need insurance. My boyfriend's sister pointed me to some child psychologists who often deal with kids my age and my situation, overbearing slash controlling slash abusive parents who try to stop them getting help. It is awesome that you were able to get a diagnosis then. I am sorry your folks were upset. And still, NTA. Hopefully they will calm down and understand the necessity of this diagnosis. In the UK you don't need parents consent for most things from 16. At 16 you can legally have sex, rent your own place and that's when doctors no longer have a right to disclose any of your medical information with your parents. At 17 you can drive and at 18 you can do everything else. 21 is only for some very niche strip clubs. There's also an awful lot of people that think ADHD doesn't exist and is just an excuse for lazy parents to have naughty kids. Also not the butthole op, I'm glad you're getting help and just wish you'd gotten it sooner. Your parents are borderline neglectful at best for forcing you to not get help. Edit, wow I've never had four digit up boats before, thanks guys. Was not expecting that. Also you have to be 21 to take up your seat in the House of Lords. How does the House of Lords work now that it is no longer actual lords who are in it? Can you call Childline on 0800-1111 or contact them online? Trust me, your parents aren't going to get into trouble for this, but Childline will be able to advise and guide you. Childline isn't just for young children getting horribly abused, they help young people up to 18 years old with all types of problems. Also. Contact your local citizens advice bureau to see your rights to access medical and therapy treatment without your parents help and to see if you're eligible for extra help. I don't know how easy it is to access NHS therapy when you're under 18, but once you're 18 you can self-refer for therapy without seeing the GP. 
Just Google your town or borough, NHS and talking therapies. It might come under a different name like Healthy Minds or Think Wellbeing, but they're the same. NTA times infinity. Keep fighting for yourself. Edit, are you applying to university because you may be eligible for a DSA? Web link. You're an absolute gem of an individual for sharing this info. I don't have any relevant to ops country. Op, NTA. I'm the wife of a teacher and what you have done for yourself will likely be beneficial to you not just for the rest of the time you're in school, including university if you so choose, but it will also help you when you enter the workforce and with your personal life. Ad is a very manageable condition and innumerable intelligent, talented people have it. Once you know how to work with things to make it easier for you, I suspect you will achieve far more than you ever thought possible. You should be very proud of yourself because you have already done something fantastic for yourself. Years from now, you'll probably still be grateful to your BF's sister. The good news is that you're almost an adult. Maybe once your parents see how much more you start being able to do, they'll back off. If they don't, well, too bad for them that they can't take pride in how smart and sensible you are and that you value yourself enough to take initiative. ETA, thank you for the award. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Too many young people are let down by their parents and their school. ADHD also tends to make people very good non-linear thinkers, good in crises, because immediacy helps people with ADHD focus, and highly creative. There's a reason a disproportionate number of people with ADHD are people with fast high pace or first response jobs. Hey thank you for mentioning this. I'm 33 female and have had my diagnosis for a few years and never could really put my finger on why slash how I'm a great person to have go to the ER with someone at 3 am and am best at my job when it is a crisis slash crazy busy. That really makes sense, especially with how we tend to procrastinate and then still do well under a crunch. Thank you for the insight. I was about to share similar info but instead I'll thank you for doing so. I've worked with teens for a while and it always upsets me when bad situations and good kids slip under the radar and struggle. Op your NTA. I didn't get my diagnosis for dyslexia until 16 and ADHD didn't come into the picture until 20. My life would be so much different if I knew about these things. The Open University do a really great DSA and you can do the courses while working to pay rent etc to get the heck out of that house. Your parents make me so angry. It's as if you needed glasses, and they wouldn't let you get them because they think having an imperfect child would somehow make them look bad. Sheesh. I give this as the example, because when my husband finally got on ad meds he described it as finally seeing clearly, like when he first got glasses. His anxiety dropped as well. He's a much happier person, by the way. I'm glad you were able to get help finally, and hopefully away from them very soon. NTA. My parents did that. I had some issues seeing kind of far when I was in high school, but my parents refused to allow an eye exam. I managed because it was just the one eye. It was amazing getting glasses in my 20s. They didn't want me having glasses earlier because it would make me worth less if I was imperfect. Literally. Virtual hugs if you want them. Thank you. I'm so sorry your parents were abusive. This is literally medical neglect. Telling you to just focus is the equivalent of telling someone with depression to just cheer up or someone with diabetes to just make insulin. Nobody would do the third thing, but they will ignorantly do the first two. Education is the key. Here are some videos by an expert on ADHD that I hope your parents will watch. Web link. I'm 18 female in the UK too and I was wondering how you got a diagnosis? I've been researching a while and it sounds like you and I have the inattentive type rather than hyperactive. If you want to do it through the NHS you can go to your GP, or call them in this day and age. Tell them you think you have it, they'll probably ask you some questions about your experience and they can then refer you on to specialists. Try either GP, your school or university. Could go private but can be pretty pricey. I'm attempting to go through university since that's where I need it for, to get help, but even then it's 300 pounds. GP it might take some time but would be free. Depends how urgently you need it. Just got to say that your boyfriend's sister sounds like a real champ, and I am so glad that you've gotten help. I was in my 20s by the time I was diagnosed with ADHD, and it took a significant toll on my relationships. Jump in now on any and all advice and help you can get. 
NTA, and I wish you the best in your journey. NTA. As you were describing your problems I knew exactly what diagnosis you got. Both me and my husband have ADHD and it's not an excuse to not be responsible or whatever ableist crap they're trying to say. Honestly, as somebody with AD, it's genuinely very difficult to do what your parents are trying to get you to do without medication. I've been taking Adderall, prescription, obviously, and have found it's incredibly helpful for making sure I can stay on task. You should look into seeing if you can get a similar medication to help, not sure how it works in the UK compared to Canada though. Just popping in to say that AD isn't actually a diagnosis. That's why you often see them grouped together as AD slash ADHD. ADHD is the official given diagnosis though. The terminology of official diagnoses varies from country to country. Are you also in the UK? I'm not. The DSM-4 is a US publication that is used for research purposes worldwide, but UK clinicians typically use the ICD-10, which also gives the diagnosis as ADHD. AD hasn't really been used clinically or otherwise, in most countries, since the mid-70s. It's an outdated term typically used to describe inattentive type ADHD. Edit, mid-80s, not 70s. Technically ADHD is also an outdated term. They really need to rename the disorder as the name causes way too much confusion. You're absolutely right. There is a lot of confusion that stems from technical diagnoses versus popular rhetoric, grimacing face. Thank you. I was curious from personal experience. The switch to the DSMV in Canada, well out of sync of our target country, led to both my son and daughter being misdiagnosed here for months. We left with letters of record but weren't able to bring the actual records for about a half year due to COVID, and they lost out on treatment opportunities. People sometimes don't understand there isn't perfect parity until they're in it, Lord knows we didn't. AD is no longer a diagnosis. ADHD is the umbrella and it's hyperactive, inattentive or mixed. I didn't realize that AD was no longer a diagnosis. Thank you for clarifying. Yay no problem. It's been on the way out but it's no longer in the DSM. She could not loop the parents in because they were too busy denying and inflating their own egos. Or they didn't want to be bothered. They sound like the type that you have to super excel or it's all the child's problem even when the child is trying and trying hard. He's 17. Why should he have to involve his parents when they are being bad parents and denying him the help he needs? Update to post, didn't realize that AD was no longer a diagnosis but rather ADHD manifests as both internal and external hyperactivity. Till. I didn't realize this, either. Until I read your comment. I just wanted to add that AD has been included under the ADHD umbrella, which is why whether or not hyperactivity is a symptom, someone with this learning disability will be diagnosed with ADHD. Just wanted to add that info for anyone doing research and if there was any confusion. Original post is totally NTA. Taking charge and advocating for yourself is never a behavior. Good luck up. If you intend on pursuing higher education, make sure you inform whatever university you attend that you have an IEP, or whatever equivalent that is, because in the States you can transfer your learning benefits and accommodations. I only learned about this because I have an education degree and when I was taking SPED courses, my sister was about to start college and I told her about it and she was able to get more time to complete projects and retake certain tests and quizzes. I don't know how it works in other countries, but this is vital information for anyone who had an IEP in high school. NTA. ADHD didn't exist in our day is plainly false, it is just that medical science, especially on mental health, has made such advancements that we are much better at understanding and treating hidden mental illness, conditions. There still remains a taboo around mental health, and it is people like your parents who perpetuate those sorts of views. It sounds like your BF's family is actually much more supportive than your actual family. This. We now know more so yes, more people are diagnosed, but just because there wasn't always a diagnosis in the past doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It's like when I was in school, those kids we thought of as weird were most likely on the autism spectrum, but our diagnosis criteria did not capture them at that time. This comment hit me in the feels. I'm a girl, born in the 80s, and I was the weird kid. I'm in the process of getting an autism diagnosis as an adult. 
It really hit me when my now 7 year old niece was about 2.5 or 3 and very obviously had something going on. And my family kept downplaying everything and would laugh and go oh, you were exactly the same way and you turned out totally fine. Like no, I did not turn out totally fine and you all are blind. They kept downplaying until my niece started school and the school had to get Cass involved so my niece could get her autism diagnosis. That's when I went to my doctor and told him everything I could. I cried some very cathartic tears when he told me that even by 80 standards, they should have done something to help me. That even in the 80s it wasn't normal for an almost 5 year old to have never said a single word. You were 5 and not verbal yet and your family did nothing? That is, oof. Were they lying to pediatricians? Like how did no doctor force the issue? My pediatrician would ask my mom how many words we knew starting at like age 2. Abby I don't remember that for me but I remember it for my brother's appointments and we had the same doc, I was born in 87. By my pre-kindergarten shots I was talking his ear off, up until I realized there were going to be shots. If I made it to 5 without ever once speaking in front of my pediatrician he would have been asking some questions of my parents. It did exist back in the day, too. It was known as minimal brain dysfunction, instead of ad. But, as you say, and like what has happened with autism, diagnosis criteria have changed, and there is a lot more awareness now. It's more about the fact that there was a lot of misinformation and lack of knowledge surrounding ADHD and how it presents. It has always really been seen as a boy condition because boys have so much energy. Many girls end up going undiagnosed until their 20s, because inattentive type is more common in girls. It is also often misdiagnosed as a learning disability or social anxiety slash awkwardness. It's the equivalent of saying gay people didn't exist in their day yeah they did. Society just didn't recognize them. Thank you for watching. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube. And share them with your friends. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. We welcome your comments below. Another of our videos will begin shortly.